What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the Muddy Wolf Studio channel. Now in the in a previous video we did a drag and shoot um, style game where I just basically, you click the screen, you drag your mouse along and you let go and then you shoot a ball with a force applied by depending on how far you dragged. Now in this video we're going to be doing the same thing but we're going to be using mobile control. So last time I've had a lot of requests to ask for mobile to do a mobile version of the video so that's what we're going to do today we're going to be using touch controls as you can see on the screen now this is um the game it's just simple ball it's just showing off the uh, physics so if you click and drag and pull and then release you can see that uh, the ball is being shot and that a force is being applied you can drag and keep shooting around again it's like the last video but just using touch controls instead so, without further ado guys, let's get started. Okay guys, now in Unity Hub, I am going to create a new project with Unity 2019.3.9 F1 uh, in 2D called Mobile Drag and Shoot. I'm going to click Create and I will see you when this has loaded. Okay guys, so we're now in Unity. The first thing I am going to do, going to get started straight away, is I'm going to click, right click into the project, go and Create, go down to Sprite and create a square. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm then going to create another sprite, uh, and this one's going to be a circle, just so we have some assets to use. So I'm now going to drag in this square up here. I'm going to drop it straight in. I'm then going to put its position to minus five. Oh, that's its sorry, that is its height. Its height will be two, but its position will be minus five. Um, its scale will be twenty. Its color now is all good. We're going to add a box collider to this, so we're going to say box collider two D. Um, and that is great. That is all we need for this simple square. We're going to duplicate the square. I'm going to make its, its uh, y5 instead. And then we're going to duplicate again. We're going to duplicate, make its y equal to 0. Its scale on the y axis equal to 10. But its scale on the x axis equal to 2. I'm then going to put its position on the x to minus 10. I'm then going to duplicate this one and set its x axis to 10. Now we have this simple border around our game just so we can bounce the ball off it. I'm going to create, just tie this up, I'm going to create a game object called walls and I'm going to drag all our little walls inside of this. Shrink it down, hit save and that is all we need to do for that. I'm going to drag the circle into the scene here so we've got a circle. I'm going to move it over just so we can see it over here. Um, I'm then going to add a circle collider to this object. A rigid body 2D. On the rigid by 2D, I'm going to set its gravity scale equal to like 3. Actually, let's say 2 for now. I want to see what it's like kind of bouncy. Uh, I'm going to set its collision section to continuous. Um, and then I'm going to head over to the right. I'm going to right click, create a new physics material 2D. I'm going to call this bouncy. So I'm going to try and make a bouncy ball effect here. So I'm just going to set its bounciness 0.8. Leave the friction as it is. Click back on the circle, which we're going to rename to ball. And I'm going to drag the bouncy into our physics 2d material now if we hit play it should fall and bounce off the ground perfect so now let's go into so one thing you need to do before he probably should say this before we do we need to go build settings and make sure we're clicking android in android and we're going to switch platform so this goes switch it over now. It's going to compile all the scripts and everything we have done so far over to the Android build. Uh, so once that is done, I will see you. While it is doing, I thought I'd say if you're also wanting to do this on iOS, this is the same script. You just need to set up to work with iOS instead. This is going to be for Android because I have an Android phone with me today. So now that's switched over to Android, I'm going to go to Run Device and select my Google Pixel 3, which is connected via a cable to my MacBook, um, which has... Um, got Unity Remote 5 downloaded on. Now you need down, you need uh, Unity Remote 5 to be able to test by just clicking play. I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to get it to actually show up on your phone so you can tap and drag. That will be either another video or you can find any tutorial on YouTube somewhere about. I'm sure someone's done it before so you can find that somewhere. Um, but I will do a video on it in the future when I go into a mobile series on my channel. Um, so for now we don't need to do anything else, that's all set. I just want to go to File, or Edit, sorry, and Project Settings. I'm going to drag this over and I'm going to go to Editor. And you see where it says Unity Remote Device, I'm going to select any Android device. Obviously if you're using iOS, you want to obviously select any iOS device, um, depending on what your 
phone as you're using. Um, so that should be good. Uh, let's click X and that should be fine. Now, now we're set for mobile controls or to be able to at least render our game on mobile. So I'm going to test this by clicking play. You won't be able to see anything, but on my screen, I should be able to now see the game or the ball bouncing and I can. So that is perfect. It takes a second. It takes a few seconds before it renders, but now the game is showing up on my phone. So I can un stop playing now and that will stop playing on my phone. That's good. So I'm just going to clear the console there. No reason. There was no reason for me to do that. I just cleared it anyway. Um, another um, component we need to add to our ball is the line renderer. Um, I'm going to just drop these down so they're not in the way. And we need to set this up. So I'm going to set this at standard 0 0.5 and double click on the right here and drag this down to near the bottom there. Um, the color doesn't have to change. Everything goes good. The end cap vertices I'm going to set to for like 10 to make it rounded. I'm also going to select the material. Please work, please work, uh, to be the default line renderer. Um, and now you can test this by setting this point to let's say one, one. There you go. You can see it's now working fine. So I'm just going to set these points to zero, the size, position count to zero. And then we are going to be, and that is it for this uh, line renderer. Now it's time for the actual dragging control. So if we go over to add component, I want to say all control. I'm going to click new script and I'm just going to click create and add. This will now create and add a new C-sharp script. Um, one, we can now double click this script to open it in Visual Studio. Okay, so we now have our Visual Studio open. We can delete the starting stuff, although we will probably need some of them. Um, and the first thing we'll set is the public float power, which will be the power you want to multiply um, by, which I'm going to set to 10F. We then want a public float max drag. Um, which will be 5F. We're going to add a public rigid body 2D called RB and a public line renderer LR. You can tell my naming convention, right? It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we want another private variable called a vector free of drag start position. We then want a touch. So this is the start of our touch control. So you get you can actually get a touch um, a finger that is touching the screen um, via this touch Unity touch class, as you can see there. So now we need an update method, an inner update method. To start off a touch sequence, we want to check if there's any fingers touching the screen. To do that, we say if input or inputs dot touch count is greater than zero, then we're touching the screen. So we can say we can now set the touch equal to input dot get touch and now we can pick which touch we want so the first finger that touches the screen will be zero if you touch it with two fingers it will be one three fingers would be two the four finger would be three obviously basically going up in fingers you're touching the screen with we're going to set it to zero because we want to just get the first touch we're touching the screen with we then can now do now we can check well actually we want to set up a couple of uh, methods here so we're going to say void drag start which is just going to be a method we then want void dragging which is another method we then want a last void called drag release which will be when we release the drag so when our finger stops touching the screen now inside of the update inside of the if statement we're going to say if and we're going to say touch dot phase is equal to touch phase Dot began. Now what this means is the phase of the touching, so when we first touch a screen, each touch has different phases. So when it first touches the screen, if it's dragging around the screen, and when it lets go of the screen. And for the when you first touch the screen, we compare it to a touch phase of began. Um, and in here we can say drag start. Then we can say if touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot moved that means we're dragging and finally we can say if touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot ended so that is when we lift our finger off the screen so we can say uh, drag release there we go so now we have set up the three different touch phases and that is all we need to do for simple mobile touching 
So we can tell when we touch the screen, where we're dragging our finger to and when we've released it. Um, and that is all we need for our drag and start. Now, all we're going to do is what we did in the last video of basically adding the method in here. So the first thing we want to do in our drag start method, my mouse is missing. There it is. It went on the other screen. Uh, drag start method is going to say drag start position is equal to camera dot main dot screen to world point. But this time we're going to say touch dot position. And this is why we set our touch as a global state or global private variable so we can actually access it in this method here. We're then going to say drag start position dot C is equal to zero F. The reason for this is because dragging for some reason is three dimensional. And basically, sometimes if you're dragging, your line renderer will go backwards and forwards on the screen and it looks really weird. Just, don't, just trust me. Just trust me. We now need to set the line, so there's a fly in my room, I'm sorry if you can hear that. Uh, we now need to set the line renderer's position count to one. And we're gonna set the first position equal to, well, the first position. So we do lr.set position and we give it the index, the position we wanna set, which is the first one, which is zero, to the position, which is drag start position. We don't wanna go into dragging. And now in here, we wanna say drag or we want to create a new vector free, which will be called dragging pos, and we're going to set this equal to camera dot main. Well, basically, we're going to set it to the same system. Let's copy this and paste this here. Perfect. We don't want to say dragging position dot c is equal to zero as well. Once we've set our dragging position c to zero, we can then set our lr dot position count now equal to two because we want to apply our second dragging position count. And we're gonna say position one so our first or the second point, and we're gonna say dragging position. Now that sets our drag position. Now in drag release, we want to say position count is equal to zero. So we're gonna remove that, our line render because we've let go. We then wanna say a new vector three, called drag release position is equal to again the same as this one up here and then we want to say drag release again dot c is equal to zero because we don't want any of this dodgy spinny stuff then we can set a defect to free force equal to drag start position minus drag release position so this will get us the drag minus the drag release, which will give us the direction we are trying to fire in. We can then set, we need enough effector free because we want to clamp that force because we don't want, basically we don't want it to be able to, depend on how far you drag and release, it shoots so you can give it infinite power. Unless you want that, then don't add the clamp. Um, and then we can say effector free dot clamped magnitude now this is a method that basically sets its mac the clamp mac so the x and the y's max um value to be whatever you sell it to be so this will be we've got to give it value which is force and then we want to give it how what the clamp is which will be max drag we then can say times by power which will basically give us our um full force now we just want to say rb dot add force we're going to say clamped force, oh, not cursor lock mode, clamped force equal to force mode 2 dot impulse. And there we go. So what we're saying here is our clamped force um, is being clamped on its magnitude, which um, returns a max length of the force um, times by the power. So whatever our power was, which is 10. So if our max um, drag is five, so if we do pull the maximum, we'll go times that by 10, obviously it gives you 50. Um, and then we're gonna add that force to our player using impulse, which gives us a instant force rather than a gradual force. Um, so let's save this. Let's move over into Unity again. Let's click on our ball and let's add in our rigid body. So I'm just gonna drag the rigid body in and the line render it in. I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna wait for it to load up on my phone. It might take a second. And now we have, I'm gonna to touch the screen. You can see the first bit is there. And if I drag on my phone, you can see on screen 
that the ball is getting the drag. And then if we release, you can see the power we are applying to the ball. Now, if we click, click again, we can keep adding. We can just fire it in multiple different directions, applying forces. Um, and there you go. You've got this ball which is flying around like a madman. Um, and I'm using my phone to do this touch movement, which is really cool. Um, as you saw at the beginning in the footage at the beginning of this video, which was the actual footage we're seeing now of me firing the ball around like a madman. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> There you go. So that is how you create mobile controls to do a drag and shoot action. And you can also use those mobile controls for any game. So you can do it in many different ways. If you've got different game ideas and stuff like that, you can do a dragging game or throw things around, stuff like that, all using these dragging controls. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that like button. Well, that is a thumbs up, Tyler. What are you talking about? Hit that subscribe button right in the fucking face get it muddy dirty everywhere and then peace out and keep muddy people